from Rochester, New York, the home of Juno the Wonder Dog, Billy's Horde of Cats, and Riker Mattress, this is FC3's Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky. And everything can be geeky if you love it enough. That includes us. With your host, my name is Chris, my fr- dearest friends Billy and Tanya. We are coming to you for 150 some odd episodes at this point. And so let's go get on with the show. Sometime we're going to have to change it to 160 something. 160. Well, we're closing in on that. I'm pretty sure yeah, of it. We're not sure. I have no. I haven't like actually like seen the postings in a while, so I don't know if there's like an episode 157, 158. So, but you like t- all? Of, well, I talked about all yeah. of our pets today. Yes. Can I tell you <laughs> my my little darling pet? Uh-huh. He has been sleeping in big time. The other day, uh-huh. I think it was. Was it Friday? For those of you who are just hearing the show for like the first or second time, Riker is Tanya's younger of her two sons. So it's just it's not actually her dog or her cat. No. <laughs> he did play a dog when he was little. He would go out in the backyard and fetch stuff. I see. Mm-hmm. Now he doesn't um, fetch anything but anxiety these days. But I don't know. I had to so Riker, for those that know, he's my youngest. He's going to be 12. Um within two weeks mm-hmm. so um typical preteen. um was it the tween that type of stuff mm-hmm. um he's he's got an early birthday present from nene like about a month ago but right. he got his he got his own laptop so he's been um doing really um well treating it with respect and things like that even when the internet goes out not mm-hmm. like the older one that totally freaks he comes down is like um Mom, can you fix it? I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But with him having his own laptop now in his room, worst thing ever, he has gotten into the routine like the older one that's 21, where he's up until like one or two o'clock in the morning, playing Roblox, watching stuff on his Kindle, doing like 20 different things. He's at least respectful enough that Nene can't necessarily hear him all the time because her room hit her room's right below his. Mm-hmm. But the other night, he was really good and quiet. But I was working on Friday morning. I, I was working. I ran upstairs at a little after one to do something while I was on my Zoom meetings. I, I had other teachers on. I'm like, I just have to run upstairs really quickly. They're like, okay. I still hadn't heard anything from his room. So I open his door at 1.30 in mm-hmm. the afternoon. He is sound asleep. Oh, he is still sleeping. And I'm like, finally, I went and shook him. I'm like, Riker, Riker. He's like, uh, go away. I'm like, no, not go away. It's 1.30. He goes, no way. I'm like, yes way. He goes, let me see my, <laughs> let me see my clock. So I showed him the clock. He goes, oh, I so sleepy. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But you need to get your little sorry butt out of bed. Seriously. But but right now it's nine thirty on Sunday morning. I haven't heard him yet. I've heard the older one. The older one has come and found me, but the little one hasn't found me yet. So, no. But... Well, you know there there are bonuses to that. It's 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 a double edged so, sword. You're not so, quite sure what's going on, but you know they haven't looked for you, so life is good. Yeah. No. He'll he'll look for me at like seven thirty at night. He's like, Mom, can I have dinner? I'm like, No, you're not having dinner at seven thirty. Where were you at five? Yeah. Type thing. I'm like. He goes, well, can I have a grilled cheese? I'm like, okay, I'll make you a grilled cheese because it's it's really quick. But mm-hmm. he's like, I want a French toasted pizza, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, I don't want you eating all that heavy carb stuff at 8 o'clock at night right. by the time everything's cooked. I'm like, no. I'm like, you need to come find us at 5 or we're like, Riker, food. And that's like, that's you your cue, dude. Down. Get your butt down here. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like yesterday I drove through and got the McDonald's because a Saturday they get McDonald's. It's like a, a like a twice a week thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I had already yelled food and Tyler found me. Tyler's my older one. He found me and he's like, oh, yay. Blah, 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 blah. I went out, changed the bulb on my um, brake light, did some other stuff. I was like, I had been home for maybe about 20, 30 minutes. And I came through the foyer and all of a sudden I heard Riker go, is mom home yet? And I'm like, no, I've been home. <laughs> no, 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 your, your response should be no in your voice. 
no, I'm like, I've been home for a half hour. I go, did you not hear me call that you had food? Daddy's like, mmm, the triple cheeseburger was yummy. I'm like, oh, those uh -huh. chicken nuggets were yummy. And Riker comes flying out of his room. He's like, no! I'm like, we're just picking on you. Come down and get lunch. Seriously. So, yeah. So that's the joys right now of not having any um, school that they're just living their absolute fun summer life, enjoying it, going in the pool, that type mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. But my pool was 90 on Friday oh, when it was so water. hot here. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, no, and the weather's broken been. finally. I mean, we had that nice rain mm -hmm. yesterday all day on and off. And, uh, oh, yeah. And the humidity went wandering off without with it uh, with the storm clouds. You know, when they moved out, they took the humidity with them. I've actually uh, got like air conditioners off and windows open for the first time in a week and a half. That heat a, was the worst. It, oh, it, was, it was horrible. I have only about two inches between my water level and the top rail now of my pool mm -hmm. from from yesterday. Now on Thursday, there was probably about six seven inches between the top of the water and the rail. Mm -hmm. So that we were like, oh, we're going to have to fill the pool. But nope, don't have to fill the pool because it got filled yesterday. Nature filled it. Nature did fill it and, and it cooled it. It cooled it off. So we checked the water temperature yesterday afternoon. It was like 86. I'm like, that's still warm. Mm -hmm. That is still way too warm. So you need like a cool night to cool it off. Well, mm -hmm. you're going to get that tonight. And we haven't. We haven't even had our solar cover on the pool in years because as soon as I put the solar cover on, bam, it turns green. I'm like, no, I'm not playing this game. So I'm like, you know, it, can deal with it being about 82. I'm trying to, I try in the, the attempt to look at the positive on things. I've had, I've been on vacation this week. I'm wrapping up my vacation. I'm heading back to work on Tuesday. And uh, so it, it was a tough week to do a lot of the yard work that I was doing to oh. catch up. Right. But, I'm looking at the alternative of if I had not taken vacation off, I would have been sitting in my car all week long mm -hmm. with no air conditioning because my car's air conditioning broke like last summer and I haven't gotten around to being able to fix it because it's just, an, it's going to be an expensive process. Right. So I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, being outdoors in this, working in the yard sucked, but <laughs> at least I had the opportunity to go in the house mm -hmm. and say, okay, enough of this. And relax for a little while, as opposed to oh, I'm at work. I'm still stuck here for another four hours. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. And where everyone's work, like, you know. like, oh my god, I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm like, I'm in the basement with leggings on and a sweatshirt while I'm working <laughs> because you know our basement is like 20 degrees cooler than the house. Yeah, I, I came so. to your house for game day one that one time, and I'm out in the back patio with Evan and your husband, and I, I'm already wearing my uh, my thick Baja, and, and Evan's looking at me like, you're cold? And I'm like, well, not now, but I will be when I go into the basement. <laughs> I know. Like, right now, I've got a um, hooded Phantom of the Opera sweatshirt on right now, because I know I was I'm going to be cold down here. Right. We got to get you a proper office. That's see, that was the thing. That's you know, that was so I was so happy to finally buy this house that I'm in now because it has that fourth bedroom and I turned it into my home office. Because for the six years before that, I was up in the uninsulated <laughs> attic of the house I was renting on Burr Street over there. So it's like, so wait, you, what? <laughs> there's sweltering. We're frozen. Oh, it was terrible. There was no in betweens. But now I'm in like an actual room in the envelope with the house, and there's heat, and I can get well, air conditioning we, from the other rooms if I need it. I do have a fourth bedroom, but mm -hmm. it's it's like the um the toy it's the toy room and it's the catch all room. Right, but it's not necessarily catch all as bad as it was like two weeks ago before my mom got here. Okay. My mom got here, I went and picked her up on a Friday or whatever, mm -hmm. and we demolished the, the toy room and cleaned it all out and I can find the floor and I can't tell you, I can't tell you listeners how many blanking Legos are in my house between Tanya's right between Riker's room, the living room, the sun room, and now the toy room, which used to be my older son's nursery because it's the smallest bedroom. So it's mm -hmm. the one closest to our room. So that was his, um, where his crib was and things like that. And then he moved into the bigger room when we got him his bunk beds and now his full size bed. So, it's now the um, catch-all for 
the closet's been converted and it's got shelves in it, um, the wire shelves that holds all of our board games that are not currently either down in the basement or our window seat. So it's mm -hmm. got our board games in there. It's got the Nintendo um, game system. It's got our Sega system with a huge TV that's like from 1997, I think, the TV mm -hmm. that's up there. It's one of those big behemoth things that we're going to need like 12 people to carry it out. Um, it's got the the Wii, it's got the um, Nintendo GameCube hooked up to a littler TV in there that was something that we've had for freaking forever. And um, my PS2 is up there. So yesterday was perfect when we lost power in internet. Guess where Tyler went? He was playing something on either the GameCube or the PS2, and he didn't have. Oh, that's to... right, because you had your generator up and running. No, we didn't have the gen. Like we had power back, uh -huh. but I was oh. in the process of trying to reconnect my internet because oh. no one lost internet except for me. I don't know why. We got to get you battery and... backups because what happens is as soon as that oh that power, sh as soon as that power blinks, that's you're you're screwed. And I've noticed that about your house is you have the generator that picks it back up, right? Or you or or power swiftly returns, but it throws everything off. So we got to get you. We got to put a battery back up on your because your router and modem are up on the first floor, right? Correct. Okay, so we put the battery back up, a smaller one on that because you only really just want to power those particular devices, and then you get a chunker for your computer down in the basement because you have all this stuff down there, right? And and so when the power blinks the battery backup holds everything in place. And then when the generator kicks back in, you may lose internet if the provider can't get the signal to you, but it won't actually right. throw everything all out of whack because when you go down, you're, you're done. You're done for like a half an hour, 45 minutes. And on another oh. note, on another note completely, Billy, have you noticed that Tanya's opinion of Legos may not exactly be positive? <laughs> I, I wonder why. Have you ever stepped on any, Tanya? <laughs> yes. Now, granted, I, I'm kind of um, hypocritical in regards to this because um, if when I'm sitting at my desk down in the basement, if I turn to my right, I happen to have a little Lego um, Star Wars. It's the... Um, the escape pod that C-3PO and R2-D2 were in that's built, that I built, um, on my on my bookshelf next to me with a little Stormtrooper uh, speeder bike. And I think that's a, uh, a TIE fighter. Now, somewhere, I do have an R2-D2 and a C-3PO Lego, but mm -hmm. I think my kid took them. Probably. And somewhere somewhere I have a BB-8 one. Now, so now those, ones I'll, <laughs> those ones I'll give you. You know, okay, they, they, whatever. I'm like, granted, I would really like the big Millennium Falcon, but it's going to have oh, to God, be yeah. put together with crazy glue so it doesn't come apart. <laughs> because Riker, Riker has the AT-AT. Yes, that I he know. Built. Uh, that he and, built, and he quote built unquote, it. he. He he built a good majority of it. We brought it down a couple of parts down to you because we couldn't figure out where where he lost track. Yeah, but I remember rebuilding all, the legs and the and the uh, the shoulder joints. Yeah, well, all in all, um, it fell off the bookshelf. Yeah, my and now broke. it's in a box. Yeah, because we don't know where to start to go back to that. You, well, you bring know, bring that like, whole thing to me. Bring that whole thing to me with the plans. And, and and it's I, not I'm, leaving your house. No, it will. It's Rikers. I would not do that to him. I could I could I can honestly tell you I don't know where it, I don't know where which box it's in or where we dumped it. I mean it might be in his big tower of Legos. Right. Well if it, if the and, if the Legos have been mixed in general population, then that project is over with. But uh yeah. but if oh. you have a box that's just that at at let me know and I can probably uh, break it down and whip it back together again. You know what? It might actually still be in the living room because it's actually in a cardboard box. So it's a living in it, a box. It's it, a living it's, in a it, cardboard box. It, it had its own box because mm -hmm. we we wanted to have all the pieces all <laughs> together. That sailed so, over the both of you. That sad. That saddens me. 
I totally missed it. It's, I, I've seen Lego sets that look like fun. I've seen a Bat Cave, and just mm-hmm. on Facebook yesterday, I think I saw a Shit's Creek set, which is a very yes. funny show. That's but, great. But I don't think uh, Five Cats will let me play with Legos. That's true. That's a possibility. They would have to be put behind, like in a glass display. Cabinet yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that that the cats couldn't get to. So I mean, Riker's got um, uh, like a ship in a bottle, one that he got from the Lego store because he wanted, wanted, wanted it, and um, Nene broke down and bought it when we were actually able to get to the Lego store so many years ago. Um, and he did a really nice job. It's got all the little light blue circular chits that um form the water in the bottom that are loose and things like that. That's actually um on display on a little um bottle holder you know how a ship in a bottle would have the little yeah yeah no, i've seen play. it yeah and so it's he, a very clever set yeah so he's got he's got that and i mean he's he's whipping them together like there's no no tomorrow it's like dip, 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 done i keep <laughs> telling like, our our contact to, to legoland that i wanted to get my hands on that jedi star cruiser from star wars old republic i have not heard any hide nor hair of that at this point but i should um, follow so, up with her Yes, we should. We should definitely follow up. Or not. Not that she doesn't have Legos herself. <laughs> Her whole bathroom is Star Wars Legos and Star Wars. I never noticed. You never noticed. Have you decided to like start moving things in that bathroom and then see if they notice that like the cows have moved here and this this one has moved there? Or you act like I've never done that. <laughs> And apparently they haven't. That's the thing. So <laughs> <laughs> they haven't said anything yet. They haven't said so. anything to me, so I don't know. No, I don't know. So. Uh, Billy, Billy, how you doing there, man? I'm good. It's weird, you know. I complain about the heat, but it's not like I've been outside and I have right. air conditioning, so I don't know what I'm complaining about. Other than You're the inability for being a grumpy old there. man, probably that's it. Uh, I wouldn't say practicing. I probably already am. <laughs> <laughs> Without the rain, I may have taken. No, I may go for more n- nice long walks. Without That's the good, heat, yeah. it keeps me from doing that. But yeah, um, it was pretty brutal. But I, I've been mostly inside watching TV and reading and listening to music. And it doesn't sound like time fully totally spent, man. I'm telling you. No, it, it's stuff I enjoy and sort of keeps my mind off the fact that the world just seems to be. Well, not the world. The United States yeah. <laughs> seems to be sort of in some major upheaval, and I try and stay out of it. I guess that's no, that makes sense. That's legit. You know, it's it's something that we've been talking about often. We we talked about it a bit last week. We talked about it. We've talked about it in other mm-hmm. podcasts because we're not just you know sci-fi nerds and convention geeks. Mm-hmm. We we uh, we do observe and keep an eye on what's going on around us. Right, so that's an important thing. So I've um, been watching uh, Pushing Daisies. I don't know if you guys ever saw that show when it was originally no, on. I or... did not. Tell tell me a little bit more about that. Oh, one. it's Who's so in that one? charming. Uh, Lee Pace, who has been in a million things, but I know him as Ronan the Accuser and okay. Marvel movies. Thank you, uh, Kristen Chenoweth. Um, oh, I love her. Yeah, me too. Uh, Swoozy Kurtz, Ellen Green, who uh, was the female lead in little shop of horrors if you remember that movie no i don't uh, another um sorry <laughs> another a british actress um god what's her name do you want me to look yeah please uh she's the female lead she plays a character named chuck because her last name is charles and she's a british actor who's done almost mostly british stuff um, but really charming with her American accent and sort of reminds me of Anne Hathaway. Oh, and a guy named Chai Anna McBride. Friel? Yes. Yes. And Chai McBride is hilarious. He was in Boston, Com- Boston Public, the, t- the, sc- the school show from a bunch of years ago. Oh, and Human okay. Target. If you remember Human Target, that was a comic book show uh, about 10 years ago. He was one of the. He's in currently that. in Hawaii Five O. Oh, is he okay? Uh, uh-huh. And he's great in Pushing Daisies. And it's based uh, the lead character is a pie maker who has the ability to uh, reanimate dead people. Interesting, uh, but they can only stay alive for a minute. 
uh, and then he has to touch them and they die again because if he keeps them alive, someone in the nearby vicinity will die instead. Uh, so him and, him and Chai McBride's character uh, solve crimes by like they'll reanimate the person that was murdered and ask them how they were murdered. Uh, but okay. there's always some sort of twist that make, that makes it harder than it should be. Uh, but it's very funny, very charming. Jim Dale, who did the Harry Potter audiobooks, uh, is the narrator. And it's a really charming narration. And it, it's really hard to explain unless you watch it. I can't do it justice at all. Yeah, I've seen um, bits and pieces of like previews or like trailers for it and things like that. And all I knew is like, um, he was in love with somebody that he brought back to life and he couldn't touch her again because then he would kill her. Exactly. And it happens to be Chuck. Yep. That's exactly and, it. And it has so a he, really fairy tale sort of feel to it. Okay. And I really like it. And I also watched frozen two last night. I, yeah, I, I watched that on Friday. Too. I watched that mm-hmm. on Friday before I went to the five, eight, five for, um, live music on Friday. I watched frozen two. And it was cute. Yeah, it was. It wasn't quite as good as the first one, and the soundtrack wasn't quite as good, but no, it was I definitely like... an hour and a half well spent watching it. So, And I'm like, oh, I've got 16 minutes left. Oh, I got to leave at 5 o'clock. Oh, damn, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I went to finish it yesterday. I truly had like two minutes left, and then the other 14 minutes are credits. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. damn it, I could have finished it. There's a <laughs> lot of credits. There was, because I watched it on um, Disney+. Plus. It, yeah, there was like 14 minutes of credits. Although if you stuck through it, there's a, like a 30 second thing with Olaf afterwards. There's a post. Oh, well, I can always fast through it. There's a post credit scene. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why they wanted yeah. you to keep you for that extra 14 minutes. Yeah. But no. So um, uh, I went and, um, to live music on Friday night, social distancing. Right. At the 585. You said um, it was a Billy Joel tribute band or something like that? It was, it was 52nd Street, which is um, a Billy Joel tribute band. Yep, I've and seen then, it before. And then um, Chicago Authority, which is, uh, I think, a Chicago. Oh, Chicago band. Transit Authority? Um, Fairport Authority? Is that what they call it? Fair, um, Chicago. Uh, Fairport Transit Authority, maybe, if it's the one I've seen. No, this was Chicago. This said uh, Chicago. Oh, okay. Because it, there's a really great Chicago tribute band out of Fairport that uses Fairport in their name. So um, this was, uh, let's see, this is called Chicago Authority. Okay, not the one. So I'm up, um, but. yeah, it was the Chicago Authority and the Fifty Second Street Billy Joel tribute. We'll be recreating the '80s while you enjoy dinner and drinks. So, um. We went for Anne's birthday, which was last week. Um, oh, that's right. So we res- so she reserved a picnic table um, out outside on the lawn, and it was um, social distancing. If you were sitting at your table, you'd have your mask off. But as soon as you got up to um, walk in to go to the bathroom or head out to the parking lot, you had to have the mask on. And they're mm-hmm. like, there was a zero tolerance policy whatsoever for that because they could have been fined anywhere from a hundred to a thousand dollars per person and they're like we're not willing to take that risk so right. zero tolerance if you can't comply you're out type thing um and which i think is totally fair yeah so we were sitting there and it was hot it was so hot friday night so we um it was myself and our friend sean um, uh, um, Amy, who is um, a Girl Scout leader with Anne, but she's in our adult tap dance. And then okay. um, another Amy. another woman by the name of Beth, which we found out lives down the street from me in Henrietta, that she just moved there. So um, we were having a good time, things like that. And at, we'd been there about a half hour and we hadn't seen a server yet. And poor, poor Gail. Gail was getting crushed. Wasn't their, their their serving staff was short anyway on Friday, and then mm-hmm. they had people call in um, sick because they were they, people were sick and things like that, and we totally get it. So they called family and friends and whatever people in. So they're like, "Please have patience with us." We're like, "Not a problem. 
we're here for a couple hours to enjoy. Whenever we get food, we get food, but we really need something to drink. Yeah. So Ann and I went in at least to get water from the bar and came back out. And we finally, um, I had to tell security about somebody that had, was sitting at a picnic table on the grass with the mask off smoking um, to have him go move him because you can only smoke in the parking lot. Otherwise, he was, he was, like, he was really nice about it. And then I found um, one of the people that were seating us, a young lady, and I'm just like, just when you get a chance, if you happen to see somebody, to send her to table 22 because we haven't seen anyone yet and we've been here about a half hour not a big deal but she's like okay and so a couple minutes later someone goes by our table never even stops and a couple minutes later someone else goes by our table looking around i think looking for our table never comes our way whatever and we're all watching the chaos ensuing yeah and they're doing their best type thing and and no one's complaining no whatever so finally that young lady comes back out and she's like has anyone come here? I'm like, no. She's like, okay, I'll be right back. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> about two minutes later, she comes back with her own pad and pen. And she's like, this is my second day on the job. I don't oh, know yeah. I remember you talking about her. Yeah. She's like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a try. She's like, so have patience with me. We're like, not a problem. Absolutely. Whatever. So she takes her order, get everything, things like that. So we get our, get our food and she's constantly coming back and checking on us, this, that, and the other thing. So we get mm-hmm. ready to pay our bill. Sean takes care of the check and we all yell at him um, because. Because why not? It, yeah. But we all, he's like, oh, no, I've got my he goes, he goes, you guys take care of me all the time. And Ann bought my ticket, blah, 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 blah. We're like, can we at least give you money for tip? He's like, sure, we can. You guys can give money for tip. We're like, okay. Ann throws down 40 bucks towards the tip. Amy throws down 20. <laughs> down 20. So this so girl on day like, two is just com- wow. completely getting her pockets lined. So therefore, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I hadn't thrown any money in. I'm like, I scooped up all that money and pulled the crisp $100 bill out of my purse. Because <laughs> you and, miss big bucks. And, I, well, I, I've had it in my purse from the beginning of the month from Nene that was giving me money for something or other. And I haven't had a chance to spend it yet. Uh-huh. So... We changed it when um, Sean signs the receipt or whatever, and we fold it, and Ann puts it in there. And when she came back, we're like, Ann's like, okay, we're all set, and everything else in there is yours. She's like, do not share it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, because okay. I know a lot of places that um, the servers put their put their tips yeah, together, put their tips and, then, yeah, they, they and mesh them. Bre- they mesh them and break them out. We're like. You do not get to share this. This one is <laughs> this yours. Is for you. This one's yours. So she goes off, whatever. It was about a half hour later. We say, and we meanwhile, other people had come by and we got boozy pops and and other drinks and things like that. Yeah, you were lushing it. Oh my god, I was. And I'm not a huge drinker. Oh, and Chris got the text message of what yeah. I had. To I was getting tiny other. drunk texts. Those were amazing. <laughs> and I and I'm not a big drinker, and I'm just like, oh. But it was so hot and the freezy pops were so delicious. Um, uh-huh. So she comes back a half hour later. She's like, I would have been back sooner, but I was in the back crying. Oh my God, <laughs> guys, you, you guys are so, so sweet. Oh, we're like, we're like, she worked her little tail feathers off. She, yeah. she earned it. She deserved it. And then about five minutes later, she comes back. She goes, um, which one of you is Anne? And we point to Anne. She's like, okay. Um, Gail wants to give you shot, give you your table shots for your birthday. Is that okay? <laughs> they're like, they're on her. We all look at each other like, okay. Shot, oh. shot, shot, shot. <laughs> they were so strong. Oh, oh I'm sure. Because Gail doesn't play. No, Gail does not play. So, um, and Ann and I were supposed to work this Friday for a, uh, something addiction, voltage, voltage, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, the the I don't know which one which group it's supposed to be, uh, but that show has been postponed and rescheduled for August because um, five eight five needs another permit from the town to do right. another live show. So um, I believe that's August twenty second, and I might be working it. Um, something about we were working, we were supposed to work the seventeenth, and then August. 8th and then like the 22nd or 23rd so because they were calling Ann and I in 
to, gotcha. to work also. So and that's, that's what we do. That's what we do. But, but the Billy Joel tribute band, I loved I, I was singing, I was dancing, whatever. And Sean oh, I've like, seen them play. I, yeah, I have seen them play before. Sean's so, yeah. like, you want to go out to the parking lot to dance? Or we, he goes, because you're bouncing right here. And then um, the Chicago Authority was good, but mm-hmm. the music was so mellow that I'm just like, I looked at him and I'm like, I've got to go because it's going to put me to sleep. I'm a good that and make heat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I am going to nap. And Sean's like, me too. So... It was like it was about quarter to nine. They were playing until ten. So that about quarter to nine or so that I left, and then sure mm-hmm. enough, I get in my car, my brake light sensors on that that's gone, and then I get stuck in a train, and I get one like, you know, of all nights, <laughs> like, of all freaking nights that things happen. So, but I did get home safely, and things like Which that. That's all that matters. Yep, I had plenty of water to drink in between all the drinks I imbibed because I am, as I said, I am Lush. very, very aware about how much I do drink if I am out and what time I do proceed to go home and drive and oh, have plenty be of Be honest. You're a lush. You know it. We know it. It's all oh, well, I'm, I'm a, Okay. I'm a lightweight. I'm a lightweight and anything more than one, I just get happy. <laughs> Happier than normal. Happy to begin with. So, what's the difference? So, yeah, was, thank you, Billy. <laughs> okay, most of my inhibitions go out the window at that point. Oh, well, see, now that's not something you wanted to share with the public. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still know w- where my faculties are during mm. that time. It's, like, it's funny for a teacher I, to say that. I know yeah, where my well, faculty is. Yeah. Well, because as I said, I'm not a big drinker. Um, I, I social drink and I know Billy's not a drinker. Susan's not yeah. a drinker and, and things like that. Um, Chris, you imbibe on some things and there's, yeah, I'm social. Too. Yeah. It's, it's more of a, so, and it truly was, it was a yeah. social. I wasn't out drinking to get drunk for the hell of it because stuff is expensive. Yeah. Type I, I can count the number of times I've been truly intoxicated on like maybe two fingers. Right. So <laughs> two fingers. Oh, yeah. not. Um, but it, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it ain't my thing. It's not, it's not a pleasant feeling. It's no. really not a pleasant feeling, and I don't know why people do it. So, well, you know what? That's not for us to understand, though. That's a thing, right? Right. Type thing, and we've like co- totally gone woo <laughs> off the rails. But, oh, are, were we ever on rails to begin with? That's a thing, right? I don't know. So we're, we're, we're just chatting. My plan for today was basically exactly what we're doing right now. We're 32 minutes into the introduction. <laughs> oh, I'd say at this point, we're just going to kind of go, go hauling off until it's time to ask a question of the week at this point. Let's, let's just chat till we're done chatting, I guess. Yeah. And actually, I, I, I have a movie recommendation for you guys. A good Tell movie recommendation. recommendation. It's, a, it's a new Netflix movie, Charlize Theron. It's called Old Guard. It's based on a, a graphic novel, Greg okay. Rucka, who writes a lot of comic books. I know him best for uh, a run he did on Hulk and a Batman run he did. But uh, Old Guard is basically a set of immortal people, beings, okay. and uh, with like automatic healing powers and, but, and really good fighters. But it's, it's a really good movie. So old guard on um, Netflix. It just okay. dropped, I think Friday, and Susan and I happened to catch it Friday. Hey, what's this? Because she likes Charlize Theron, and so I look it up. And uh, after centuries of protecting mankind, a covert team of noble mercenaries with a mysterious inability to die are suddenly exposed and must now fight to keep their identity a secret, just as. An unexpected new member is discovered. That's the IMDb description. And is this supposed to be like some sort of casual sequel to Hancock? No, it, it, this is based on its own graphic novel, and uh-huh. no, there's no Hancock. Uh, it's not that feel or anything. So okay, and it, it's really that would be good. my curiosity because you know it wouldn't be Charlize's uh, first run at uh, at something like that. No, she no, was said, Mad Max Fury Road, right? Was yes. that her? Yeah, that was her. It's um I'm on Forbes.com. Mm-hmm. It says um 
Netflix is like the first sentence is that Netflix's old guard is a 70 a 70 million prologue to a sequel that even with strong initial viewership may never actually get made. Oh man. <laughs> That's tough. Hmm. I think it, I thought it was really good. Do you remember um, there was a similar review of the last Fantastic Four movie to get made, the one that had Miles Teller in it? Yeah. You know, it was the 100 minute pre, uh, preview to the movie that mm -hmm. we wanted to see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so that movie was bad. I, I really thought it really this was. one was good. And that it wasn't the fault of the actors yeah. on that one either. I mean, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara, Miles Teller, you mm -hmm. know, these are. These are people who knew what they were doing, you know, young up and comers. But um, the writer director had some issues, I think. I, yeah. I hear he's a, I hear he's not a nice person. The guy, the director's name was Josh Trank. And just recently, mm -hmm. I think he had more issues with people or some project he's working on where he sort of melted down. Huh. The he, director? What's that? Yeah, the director. Yeah, the director. Josh yeah. I think um, now that you've mentioned his name, I I do believe I've heard those those rumors as well. Let's see. Um, uh, we're still talking Fantastic Four, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. J Josh Trank was the. Uh, Josh Trank quit social media after fight with trolls. <laughs> um, which I I suppose is fair also. Uh huh. Uh, Has anyone um, caught Warrior Nun yet? Warrior I saw what? that Warrior Nun. Warrior Nun. Okay. That's also on Netflix. No, I haven't. That's that just one. came out on um, July second. No, I haven't Warrior caught Nun. Warrior Nun. After waking up in a morgue, an orphan teen discovers now that she possesses superpowers as the chosen Halo bearer for the secret sect of the demon hunting nuns. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. Evan and Randy have both started it. Say say that IMDB again. Say that that breakdown again, just because I I, I heard is, you, but I just I want to hear it a second time. Th this is actually from the Netflix official site. Okay. After waking up in a morgue, an oh. orphaned teen discovers now discovers she now possesses superpowers as the chosen halo bearer for the secret sect of demon hunting nuns. That's amazing. Hmm. Huh. That is amazing. Yeah, um, it says young woman wakes up in a morgue with inexplicable powers and gets caught up in a battle between good and evil. <sighs> and you know what? I want to say that we have been sent some information through our Facebook page in regards to Warrior Nun. Uh huh. Um, I'm gonna have see. to claim ignorance yeah. on that one. Um, yeah, June thirtieth, we were. Uh, we were given information about it. Does the Star of Warrior Nine want to be at FC Three Twenty Twenty? No. It, um, someone worked on the comic book as a writer for um, the comic book. Oh, that's cool. So send us information. So no. we haven't. We haven't. Um really sent anything back but we just keep getting information and it just so happens that warrior non happened to be one that we got information about just the premise alone is making me laugh do either of you know who uh comedian jim jeffries is yes australian uh, fellow right yes correct I'm, I'm a fan of his he dropped a new special last week so i watched that thursday or friday night and it's very very funny and there's one line in it that made me laugh really hard and I can't just, I, I know Susan wouldn't enjoy his sense of humor. So I watched it alone. So I'm going to share the one joke with you because it'll just make Susan mad and it might make Tanya mad, but I don't have to live with Tanya. <laughs> Fair. That's a valid, valid point. Uh, I know where you live though. Yeah, true. But he, he's talking about the difference, oh, the differences in movies, men and women like you. Men, we like action comedies because we're funny and we do stuff. Because women, they like dramas because, well, they cause drama. Yeah. That's it. Oh, man, that's funny. And silence from Tanya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so name a drama that you think I would like. Well, you're name special. Drama you would like. I'm spe- <laughs> you're special. Nice save. Nice yeah. save, Billy. <laughs> name a For- drama you would like. Thornbirds from the '80s. Never seen it. I know. I'm just saying. I'm thinking you'd like it. I just know that that Susan particularly likes dramas, so. I didn't want to, but I still don't want to share that joke with her. So she'll take offense. I was going to say, lately, I was going to say, uh, in the last so many years when I've been going to movies with Sean, I I see, I mean, granted, like all the Marvel movies and things like that. Yes, of course. Yes, I'm special. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that, but. Never doubted I, it. I, I went to Rambo Last Blood with him. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't I watched, want to see that. I watched some of it through my fingers. Um, um, some of it I just listened to with my head in uh, Sean's shoulder um, because I did not want to uh, see all that gore and things like that. I'm, I'm like, I like action. Right. I don't like gore. I don't like being scared. That, that's, I appreciate that, that. That's mine. I don't like being scared. I um, saw arachnophobia way back in the 90s, like when hmm. it came out at a friend's house, drove home in the dark, um, got home. And I know I've probably told this story before, but the, um, how we'd come into my parents' house, it was a farmhouse was through the bottom, um, door. It, it starts at a landing and either you can go down to the basement or up into the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And it looks just like kind of one of the scenes in arachnophobia. Right. And I tell you, I unlocked the door I quickly locked the door behind me and then leapt from the landing up to the kitchen doorway because I did not want to touch the stairs whatsoever. I can't, I, I, I can't mock that. I can't because I've done similar things. Because and, and of- it was only, and it's only four stairs, but I remember leaping it and I'm like 18 at the time. Mm-hmm. It was like, I'm like, thinking that there was going to be these gigantic spiders coming out from my basement. Now, granted, there's probably a gazillion gigantic spiders down there anyway, but yeah, no. Not an arachnophobia level ones. No, and I'm like, I can't do it. I'm just like, I do not like watching something that's going to scare me where I am going to have a hard time falling asleep mm-hmm. type, type thing because I'm my mind just starts wandering and it's just oh, that's goes fair. Through overdrive and totally like right now I'm starting to hyperventilate just a little bit down here yeah. just thinking about it because I'm in the basement. Um, so yeah, but, but you get the dinky little ones down there. Yeah. The, get, you, you, oh yeah. You, there was one that's trying to go in for my computer the other day and I'm like, ah! so I had to, and Sean's like, what the hell was that? I'm like spider. <laughs> so, but yeah, I don't what like have, spiders. What have you been enjoying Christopher? Anything? <sighs> I tell you what, um, I've uh, recently picked up um, a mod for Minecraft, right? Uh, Juliana's boyfriend, Josh, recommended a couple of them to me. And so I've been been playing this one mod called Dungeons and Dragons and Space Shuttles, which takes the vanilla Minecraft that a lot of people are familiar with and adds layers of different components and different things. Like you can build technological things, but you can also kind of mix in magic, a little bit of magic. Uh, like yesterday I was kind of poking around the world that I created and, and I found a, like basically an ancient Greek temple that had a Medusa in the basement that did not end well for me, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, and just across the bay from that particular temple was this huge stone dome, like perfectly formed dome. So I went and investigated it and found a massive Cyclops hanging out on it. That did not end well for me either. Um, but, you know, I'm finding these cool things. And also, I'm also uh, starting to build like basic technological components, right? So you can start building your own kind of like factories and things. So I've got this cool mix. And for me, because, you know, where, where Tanya is frustrated with Legos, I, I love them even to this day, right? So this is like online Legos as far as I'm concerned. This When I first, I was like, Minecraft, I, it's just a kid's game. But then I started realizing the complexity of it. And though the looks of it uh, can be very simplistic at the vanilla level, uh, the complexity that the game designers put into this was rather impressive, I have to say. And I've really been enjoying playing that. Um, when I'm not doing that, I have, uh, I've been playing this game called Pathfinder Kingmaker, uh, which is a first-person um, kind of real-time strategy game based on the Pathfinder 
role-playing game rules, which Pathfinder is basically D and D on, on steroids. Um, Pathfinder is broken. Yeah, and it's but the, the game is very faithful to the Pathfinder book rules, which I thought was oh, great. Man. And my buddy Scott um, was into it, and he uh, he recommended it through the through Steam service. And uh, so I've been when I'm not playing Minecraft, I've been playing that. When I'm not doing that, I've been doing yard work and cleaning up the attic and cleaning up the basement. I've been really kind of just enjoying catching up on everything that. Uh, I have fallen behind on in my house and it, and it's good to feel like, Oh, I'm a homeowner again. Yay. You know, it's, it's getting stuff done because I'm like usually so busy on the weekends as of late that as soon as Saturday comes around, I'm doing something and I can't pay attention to this project and now I'm doing something else and I can't pay attention to this one. And so a lot of stuff just fell behind. So I've been, I've been kind of just enjoying being a homeowner and getting stuff done and, and, uh, you know, and then spending time with both of my kids. Ian was over for a couple of days. He's back to his mom's, helping her out with some things. He spends most of his time there because she's closer to his school, right? So he's just, he's set up shop there. Um, but, and Jules lives with me full time now, which is fun. So mm-hmm. it's, it's good to have her. And I think she's happy to be back to work. Yes, right? she is. She she hates work, but she's happy to be there. Which means she's a perfect adult in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like... Um, I don't think I've watched anything interesting lately. I watched a couple of episodes of The Floor is Lava because I was told to. Um, <laughs> but other than that, the, the TV and I kind of, we've just not been paying attention to each other lately. Um, what I do is when I'm at my computer, puts around with all these various things I've been talking about, I have my tablet sitting next to me and it's usually on YouTube, right? So I'll just start cycling through videos of whatever topic is interesting to me at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I was watching a whole thing about the space shuttle program. I was watching a whole thing about the SpaceX Falcon program, uh, which then led me to, I watched like three or four days in a row. I was watching uh, on Marathon, Neil deGrasse Tyson's uh, Star Talk series, uh, which he would, you know, he's broadcasting for the radio, but he does it usually in front of an audience or with somebody in, in his office there at the planetarium. And uh, then they post the video of, it's like a behind the scenes video. So when he's at break, you see the two of them just you know shooting the shit and talking about various things about what they're going to talk about in the next segment. So that's been a lot of fun, you know? So I've been learning stuff from them, uh, especially because in Star Talk, it's genius because he has two sides of the panel. One side are the scientists and the other side are usually well-read comedians, right? And so that's how I'm able to, to see all this complicated stuff is through the eyes of Paul Rudd. You know, or Michael Ian Black. That's you know. exactly, you're exactly right. That's why John Stewart and people like him make the news more palp- uh, palatable. They make it more accessible. Yeah. Yes. That's the exact word. Thank you. You know, they, they boil it down and they make it more accessible for you. And and I think that's phenomenal. And and this is just a, a, a great um, uh, example of how how they do that and and it's not dumbing it down they don't dumb it down they just find a way to translate it Lame so that time. you can understand what's being said and the connotations behind the things they're talking about so that's kind of I, I really do appreciate that and tiktok i my son got me into tiktok and dan <laughs> and i've been sh- uh, sharing tiktok videos and it's like i didn't think i was going to be getting into it but there are a lot of tremendously creative people out there. It's not just kids being goofy. It, there is some really interesting things being done on this app, app and I'm finding it fascinating. I'm like, this is really, really cool. So that's, that's another thing. Although I'm going to see, I'm going to see you dancing on there soon, aren't I? You know what the funny thing is, is I, I will follow mm-hmm. people who I find really, really mm-hmm. interesting. And suddenly out of the blue, I have been garnering followers. And I have not made a single video, but I have like five or six followers now. I want to make a, and I think one of them is Jules. So that's, you know, that's kind of a given thing. Um, But I want to make a video just saying, who are you people? And why are you following me? (laughs) Do you realize I don't do anything? (laughs) And that's going to get blown up and gone viral. (laughs) Yeah. And then I'll be forced to, and that's that's how they sucker you into things. Then you'll be forced to be like, all right, well, I guess I got to make a freaking video now. So. But um, it's just interesting to seeing like the trends of, of the challenges and things like that. So it's 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 been fun, you know. And then and see, let's see. Today's Sunday. Uh, I have off tomorrow, and then I'm back to work on Tuesday. So then I'll be 
back in my car looking for ways to catch up on my workload and and get some things done and back to the grind of it basically so we'll see we'll see what happens well today's sean's birthday it is i saw that i gotta make sure to send him something so when i was talking to him this morning he's i said that we were podcasting today and he's like okay i'll be around um he's like i am plotting your guys's demise i'm like all right the the avengers campaign (laughs) the avengers campaign whatever starts next sunday Uh um I think you're the only person in the campaign that doesn't have healing capabilities. Well, you, are, heal you are incorrect. That, well, to, to be able to heal somebody else? Yep. Oh, man. that Sean says that he believes that you are going to be his monkey wrench. That's fine. Because Hunter is a, a barbarian cleric. Uh-huh. Um, Scott's a druid. Uh, let me uh, let me pause you just for a moment so Billy is brought up to speed so he's not lost here. Uh-huh. Um, our friend Evan, who has been our regular dungeon master for the past many months, uh, is going to be going through a hip replacement operation. So he wow. is going to be yeah. he's he's going to be going through that. Best of love to uh, to Evan. Heal fast, brother. Um, but he is not going to be capable of handling stairs. Well, where do we get together? Is in Tanya and Randy's basement dungeon, right? The, the the gaming dungeon with the big tables and everything, but he's it's stairs. So he's like, all right, for a couple of weeks, I'm not going to be able to handle coming to gaming. Okay, that's fair. Sean pops up with, well, then I've got an idea for basically a quick, you know, maybe one, two session campaign. It's going to be this. And he paints a picture basically of like, um, the you know the final scene of uh, of Marvel Avengers where it's the Chitauri invading New York. So it's going to be a post. It's going to be an apocalypse kind of a scenario, but more high scale than just a city. And he goes, I want you to bring a character that you have played that you loved to play or what you know couldn't get a chance to play out all the way you wanted to and bring it to this campaign. It doesn't matter what game system it's going to be from. He goes, we'll figure out how to streamline everything. He goes, but bring a character that you played once and want to play again. All right. So this is becoming basically an all-star game of characters that have never met before, uh, of, of various power levels, mainly high-level characters. And um, so as, as Tanya was saying, Hunter's bringing this uh, a, a priest that can rage and fight really hard. Uh, Tanya herself is bringing um, a, a ranger cleric that was like one of her first characters ever playing. Um, who, Scott is bringing a druid from another one shot that Sean ran. Uh, who else is going to be at the table? Randy? Randy? Do, do Randy? We know what Randy's, Randy's, what bringing, Randy's bringing in a character from the Wheel of Time campaign that Sean ran. Okay. Uh, um, Randy's like, oh, man, Sean blabbed. Because uh, Sean told me this morning, he goes, he's just about as bad as you about keeping a secret. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't think Sean knew that it was a secret. But um, <laughs> it, it's some type of uh, clerical type a character also because Randy can heal. Um, he's like, He's like, Sean goes, did I scare you guys? We're like, yes. Yes. Yeah, well, that's yes, the point. You <laughs> when you're facing <laughs> the end of the world, you know, this he is the said, kind of thing. You, Sean said it was him trying to kill us. It yeah. was going to be him trying to take over the world and kill us. And it was our job to stop him. Okay. So, so the character I'm bringing... Um, is from an Iron Gods campaign, which is a type of Pathfinder. So you have Pathfinder game set and it has different uh, settings. And one of those settings was Iron Gods. So you have your swords and sorcery, high magic and, and priestly fantasy. But what happens is along the way, they start discovering and like this alien ship has crashed on the planet. And there is a society that has started to adapt. And it was many, many, many years ago that this happened. But this society that grew up around it um, kept it secret. So it was like Wakanda, you know, like where they just kind of hid them way, hid themselves away in, in secret and made themselves an advanced civilization. So you have your typical, you know, warriors and thieves and priests and magic users and wizards and things like that. Now they've discovered laser guns and armor and jet packs and, and all sorts of technology. Well, for this campaign, I had crafted what's a class called an artisan, which is a third party class, but it meshes into Pathfinder. <laughs> And I created, in essence, a half-elven version of Tony Stark. So my whole goal for the entire campaign was to create uh, the Iron Man suit. So that was, and I did it. I succeeded, but I succeeded seconds before the last session played. 
So I got to use it to trans uh, to transport myself to a particular location, do a little bit of investigating, help solve the problem, and the campaign was over. I never got to use the, mm. the 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 actual character in that fight scene where it's like, okay, this is we're going down. This is here. It's this is happening now. Um, and so since then. Now with this, the advent of this campaign coming up, Sean even made a Marvel reference. He goes, "Think Galaxy, Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers. This is you know Apocalypse. Bring everybody out." I'm like, "Okay." So I'm going to my Tony Stark character, and then he's like, "Okay," and bump it up to this because I'm going to need this kind of power level. Okay, cool. Well, what this guy is able to do is mesh technology, create technological items, but also craft magical items. So he's bristling with tech infused with magic. So out of, out of the suit, he's just a guy who can build things. You know, he's he's got he's got some health. You know, he can take a hit or two here and there, but he has no real powers of his own. But now you've put him in the suit or give him his items. Yeah, and I'm I'm basically a six foot three walking Swiss Army knife that flies. And uh, so I'm like, no, I'm not worried about healing. I've got plenty of it at my disposal. Cool. So yeah, we'll we'll let you, um, our dear listeners, in on how well this fares over the next oh. couple um, oh. gaming sessions. I just got up. Somebody's somebody's asking for my attention at the moment. Hi Juno, she's back. Oh, hi baby. Yes, she woke up from her nap and is instantly like, now you have to pay attention to me. Doesn't matter if you're doing something, Dad. No, touch me. Okay. Huh. <laughs> it's dogs. <laughs> So yes, that's. I'm looking forward to that. The th- but it it really does enhance what I've said about Pathfinder all along. Is <clears throat> it's great on how crunchy and detailed and customized you can make a character with Pathfinder. But I have a half inch binder with three or four different dividers just to keep this guy s- sorted out and organized, so I know where everything is and can find information readily because he's just complicated to run at this point well last week you last friday no two fridays ago you helped me um uh convert my ranger cleric which was the second edition character uh-huh. into um sean just asked to go into like a, a d20 system even though second edition is a d20 but it was it, kind it, of a precursor it's like it was like it a prototype. reverse d20 system it's the mercury gemini program compared to the orion program you know it's just like oh there's a there's a difference here there's yeah i don't understand what that meant but um okay it's, it's, it's the, the evolution of the space program roll with it honey You're really okay right. i will okay. i'm like i don't understand it so um we converted my character to a pathfinder character and um, for those that knew second edition, I'm like, 19th level character was pretty strong at that point. Oh, but it, yeah, crazy. right. Yeah. I'm like, you really couldn't be touched or whatever. You decimated through everything. But looking at it now, if she survived one or two combat rounds mm-hmm. in, in today's day, she has 85 hit points as a second edition character. Okay. That at that time is like, whoa, that's a lot, whatever type thing. Mm-hmm. So Chris converted my character to, we converted it to a Pathfinder character. Mm-hmm. Before we rolled any dice, she had 95 hit points. Before yes. we rolled any of her level dice. So when everything was said and done, after we, we put the final touches on her, which we still have a couple things to do, yep. she's got two, like 220 hit points now. It was just like, damn. Well, back in the day, she could take a hit, right? And that was second edition stuff. Now, in Pathfinder, she can take a hit. So it's mm-hmm. it's 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 um. Oh yeah, it's like, it just shows the power. It shows shows the power differential between second edition and Pathfinder. Really, that's so, about it. So uh, we play Pathfinder on Thursday nights. We finally mm-hmm. leveled again. So we are what sixteenth level. Yeah. Um So sixteenth level, I'm a. Uh, Seventh level sorcerer, ninth level dragon disciple. So I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting D12s for that. Right. Um, I only have one more level in dragon disciple. Then She's I have to a monster. To, yeah, I truly like my skin has hardened to a point where it's um scales can come out that type of stuff. Um, I'm I think I have the second highest set of hit points in the party, and, <laughs> and I have a casting class. I don't know uh-huh. where Don's is. But 
my character's got 246 hit points. Yeah, so she can take a, a whooping. Oh, yeah. It, it, total beating. And I'm like, Hunter's like, oh, my God. She's like, I've got like 170 or whatever she has. She's a beefy. Cleric. Yeah, and she's a beefy cleric. And um, they're like, holy shit. I can't believe how many. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I can take a hit. I'm like, I I am the, what is it? The, the defiant. They can take some hits, but they don't have the armor class mm -hmm. or something, something like that. Because I have like one. Oh, you're dreadnought. Yeah, you're dreadnought. I'm, you have no armor, but I have no armor. I think my armor class is like a seventeen mm -hmm. or, maybe, or something. Maybe it's whatever. But I, I can be hit, but I can take the hit. Poor Billy. So. We're speaking a foreign language. No, <laughs> I, 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 <clears throat> excuse me. I was just thinking. This is. A thing that shows that you guys are creative people. Mm -hmm. No, to an whereas, extent for me, not as much. Well, but still, it it shows a creativity that yeah. that sort of uh, shows why we enjoy the stuff we like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it just listening. You guys, you know your your story, your world building, basically. Your, your storytelling, story your storytelling, and world building. I, I absolutely, that's like my favorite part of D&D. &D. When, I, when I started dungeon mastering 30 years ago at this point, um, I did use a lot of Forgotten Realms material because that's what my, my gang was using. But then I started kind of coming up with my own ideas and I'm like, oh, wait, whoa, what about this? What about this? Well, this is pretty complete over here, so I don't want to ruin this world. I started creating my own and that became the basis of 95% of the games I dungeon mastered over the years was this world that I created on my own. And, uh, and right now, as a matter of fact, I'm dungeon mastering my own kids and some of their friends uh, in that very world. And, you know, every so often I do a big campaign where something epic happens and changes the course of the, the way that the world runs and whatnot. So it's like, you know, like the end of an era, you know, moving to another era. So See, and while you're doing that, I'm creating a world where Ben and Jerry's has invented an ice cream with the marshmallow swirl from fish food and the fudge mm. core of brownie batter core and nothing else. Now, that sounds good. I like that. That's very creative. Mm. I like that. Oh, my God. I had run out yesterday, got home, and I proceeded to plop myself on my bed with a container of the Ben and Jerry's chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream and <laughs> watched about six episodes of Glee. So, I love Glee. Oh, Glee. Yeah, poor uh, Naya Rivera. Naya Rivera. Have they yep. found her yet? No. Oh, well, we know how that's ending at this point. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who may not be in the know, uh, recently the news broke over the weekend that she and her little four year old son went swimming um, and they found the four year old sleeping fast asleep in the boat and said that. They were having a they were having a hard time, and they got and the, the little boy got back to the boat, but then mommy didn't come back, so she's been missing while swimming since Wednesday night. So. So, yeah, and so you kind of know what that translates into. So that's a very unfortunate thing. What a talented and beautiful human being she was. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, that's and a, it's I'm a big Glee fan, and mm -hmm. she was actually my favorite character on it. I read her book a couple oh, yeah? of years ago. She had a, an autobiography, and you know she had some like uh food issues, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, but a really interesting, like if I don't know if you guys remember Red Fox started in Sanford and son. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then in his later years, he had a show, I believe it was just called the Red Fox show. It was another sitcom uh, that was on for right. a season. Or, it was on for a season or two. Uh -huh. And uh, that's the one where he had a heart attack during uh, rehearsal and died. She oh. she played the little girl in that show. Oh wow! Which I, did I didn't realize till I read her book. And uh -huh. when I think about Glee, because the cast was huge, you know, it's got yeah, well, a couple dozen people in it, but just three of them have died under the age of thirty-five. Yeah, Corey, which, uh, Mark, yeah, Sam, and yep. uh, well, she's and what thirty-three. Thirty-three, yeah. Thirty-three, thirty-four, something like that. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, uh, Corey Monteith, was that his Corey name? Corey Monteith at the X and the Yep. And Mark Salen committed suicide after uh, being convicted of child porn charges. Right. It so, was an unfortunate story to begin with. Yeah, it's a terrible story. But Glee is such a good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm only on season two, but I'm re-watching it. I've already seen it all, but mm -hmm. I'm re-watching the, the series. 
it's funny, you know, um, the last season after Corey Monteith died, I couldn't watch that last season for over a year because okay. it just makes, makes me too sad. Like mm-hmm. just thinking about it, I can't watch because they filmed an episode where uh, they've had Finn's funeral. They never yeah. said how Finn died on the show. Right. Um, but they, and that episode might be the most heartbreaking hour of television it is. you'll ever, ever watch. I cried for the whole thing. Pretty much. I did catch parts of it. Like, like, you know, we were talking about Naya Rivera, her, mm-hmm. her solo. I mean, you could tell that Naya was coming through, not just Santana, her character, right? right? It was her pain was coming through mm-hmm. that character. And it was just, it made that whole number that much more authentic. And it was, that was powerful. That and was Leah powerful. Michelle, who played, um, what was Leah Michelle's character Rachel. name? Rachel. Rachel. Thank you. You know, she was dating Corey uh, Monteith at the time. So she was his real life girlfriend. And right. How hard was that on her? Oh, I can't it, imagine. I, I, I can't either. It's, but that show, I, I now want to rewatch that show again, although I may need some time because it's, it's, that, yeah. it's, well, I had started watching it before the this news came out about Naya. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm in season two now. I'm I'm like um at like the Valentine's Day mm-hmm. episode. Okay. Um, where Kurt's they over at, Kurt's over at Dalton Academy um with the warblers. Oh okay with Oh right, right. Yeah yeah. Um, Which uh if the leader of the uh the I wanna say quite the glee club over there Warblers. Uh, yeah. Blaine. Is that the character's name? Blaine right Blaine now. Blaine was Kurt's not, boyfriend. Yep. It's the, not Grant Gustin yet. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't come across the flash in there. No, not yet. It's, it's two, this is only season yeah. two. Okay. This, this is the dark haired um, Blaine character. Okay. So. so that Glee is such a good show, I mm-hmm. thought. But, you know, I could I could have lived in, in, you know, without some of the drama sometimes some of the storylines were like, "Eh, okay, but I always enjoyed tuning in for the performances because the The kids are so amazingly talented and funny. I am a, I'm a sucker for almost any show where they break out in a song. I don't know (laughs) if you've seen uh, Zoe's infinite playlist. No, I haven't. It just finished its first season month or two ago. And it's about a woman named Zoe who can read. She can, uh, hear people's thoughts through song. Like um, there's a guy like going through a rough time and he's hearing uh, I like a, a Beatles song. No, he's hearing help by the beat. Okay. Or you, you see him singing it. She's seeing him sing help, but in like real life, no one else sees that or hears that. Gotcha. She, she sees and, and hears their thoughts through song. And it's it's a funny show and it's a sweet show and it's coming back for a second season and I'm looking forward to it. So Zoe's Infinite Playlist. Do you know who's in that one? Oh, it's someone famous. Why am I blanking on the name? Let me look it up. Uh, Peter Gallagher plays her father. Um, Mary Steenburgen plays her mother. Why am I having okay. trouble remembering who, who's her? Zoe's Infinite Playlist. Excuse me. Zio. This comes up. Uh, Infinite. There it is. Cast. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Jane Levy. Oh, she was uh, Jane the Virgin. No, was she Jane the Virgin? Jane Levy. Skylar Astin. Alex Newell, who was in... uh, she was in Glee, or he was in Glee. It's a it's a transgender, so I'm I'm having trouble with the pronoun for Alex's name. Uh, well, you should try and uh, Peter Gallagher uh, and Mary Steenburgen. Jane okay. Levy was in God knows what some another show that was popular. And I'm sorry. Oh, it's always extraordinary playlist. Okay. Yeah. Jane Levy plays Zoe. And she was also in, 
Oh, an Evil Dead movie. Castle Rock. No, I guess that Twin Peaks she was in. I'm thinking of someone else, though. So, uh, But it's a very good show. It's always in the playlist. And I'm sorry if I de- derailed. Oh, oh, she was in Suburgatory. Oh, okay. I think she was the daughter in Suburgatory. Okay, yes, you are correct. Yep, there she is in that. So I've, I've enjoyed, like I said, if you sing during a TV show, I'll probably watch it. Oh, that's <laughs> right along. So that, that's why I also like frozen, which actually led me to a rabbit down a rabbit hole last night, because after watching frozen two, uh, it got me thinking of, um, uh, Idina Menzel, who was in the original Broadway cast of wicked. It was her right. and Kristen Chenoweth. And I wound up uh, digging out the soundtrack from Wicked, the original Broadway cast, which is so good. Kristen Chenoweth. See, now I've, is... I'm not, I mean, I know Wicked exists, but I've never actually listened to it other than, you know, Defying Gravity. That is mm-hmm. the, like the breakout song. But when I think of Adina Menzel, I think Rent. Oh, okay. Right? See, I've never seen boring. Rent. Oh, dude, you would love that show. I, I guarantee it. Like right now, I would say find it. I think it's on any of the streaming surf- uh, services with with the original cast. And you've got um, I, I unfortunately don't remember a lot of the the, character, the actors' names. Um, but if, did you see Rosario Dawson in Rent? Or- yes, Rosario Dawson yeah. was in it. She played the Mimi part. Um, the guy who plays Joe in The Flash, he's in it. Okay. Uh, did you see Star Trek Discovery? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Because the the two of the mains are are in there are in and it's funny because they actually make a comment, uh, you know how they you, you had, there's Easter eggs right, but in Star Trek mm-hmm. Discovery the two characters, um, fr- the two actors who are in Rent play characters that are married to each other, and at one point uh, one says to the other, oh, I want to take you to this great um, rendition of of La Boheme, and which is the opera that Rent is based on. Oh, cute. That's okay, a, the story the yeah. story is supposed to basically be a spin-off of it. Like like West Side Story is a representation of Romeo and Juliet. Uh Rent is La Vie Boheme is the big breakout hit of that one. Hmm. Uh and so it's La Boheme, you know, and so that with that's that circles it all the way around. I thought that was a great Easter egg. Um the music is fantastic. I think the story is very touching and telling. Uh it deals a lot with drugs and HIV. And and dealing with it in an, in a society that was only just starting to become aware of how deep that rabbit hole went, and I think it's just it's a fantastic message, a fantastic show, and it was really, really talently talently done, yeah. uh, well done. So I think you'd love that one. I will check that out. And actually, just mentioning Wicked makes me want to re reread the book. I don't mm-hmm. know if you've ever read the novel for Wicked, no. which is almost nothing like the play. The uh, I mean, it's got the same characters and the same basic storyline, but for mm-hmm. obviously for theatrical reasons, it's very fluffy. Whereas the book is about as politically charged as you're going to get. It's a fantasy novel, but it's definitely an allegory for like class racism, uh, mm-hmm. you know, class structure in the United States. It's, it's really, really good. It's an excellent book. So I sort of want to read, reread that. I think it might be on Hulu. What is rent rent. Okay. I will check that Maybe. out. Maybe. Yeah. And also have you, have either of you watched Hamilton yet? I have. Um, I watched the first act and I will be honest, I, I guess maybe I was just tired of something. I was mm-hmm. so overwhelmed by it because there was just so much going on. And and it's a tribute to Lin-Manuel uh, Miranda because of how, how knowledgeable he is of the subject, how talented he is as a writer. But there was so much going on in every single song. And I just, I was tired that day. I yeah. just over, I did not sit in for the second <laughs> act. I couldn't do it. Yeah, Susan and I haven't had a chance to watch it either for almost like you almost have to be in the right mindset, I think, mm-hmm. to to watch it. So we haven't yet because we don't want to not do it justice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, it was it was 
amazing to watch and the accuracy because I'm, I'm, I'm a student, like, unlike Tanya, I love history. I'm, I've read it. I've studied it. I read the essays. I read the books. I, I've, you know, been to the classes, et cetera, like that. So there was not a lot of stylizing and streamlining of, of Hamilton's story. There was a lot of truth there. And, and I find that to be refreshing because I don't often see that level of detail in a historical drama. You know, the clo- another one that comes to mind was um, Gettysburg, you know, the big miniseries or the movie right. uh, Gettysburg that had Jeff Daniels in it. And then there was a follow up um, uh, miniseries that was made that had Jeff Daniels playing the same character. And whoever produced those two, uh, they were very diligent to bring forth, you know, the good and the bad about that particular event. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Nice. So, do you think we should take a break? I think we should take a break, and then when we come back, we can talk a little bit about what happened to FC3 uh, and what we've got going on up our sleeve for that, and then we'll do our question of the week. Excellent. All right, and we're back, ladies and gentlemen. That was a good conversation. We had fun with that. See, that's we that's why we we always have fun. That's the and we could part. still go. I mean, we could go, but there's a limit to how much Dan will allow us to do in a podcast. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to cut it off here. You have a part two coming up. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, like, damn it. it's what we've been up to for the last week. Yeah, pretty much. It, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, this is usually in the point of the podcast, we talk about events and we did have some big news drop this week after a lot of careful consideration, careful monitoring of what was going on with everything. Uh, we just, we decided we don't have enough good information and a not enough comfort level to carry forth with FC3 in September. So we originally set for May uh, and then the quarantine hit and the COVID crisis began in, in earnest and we're like, okay, well, we got to reschedule. And the Total Sports Experience in Gates, they were awesome. They worked with us. They helped us find a good date in September. Uh, and, uh, and and we went with it. Uh, but at this point, now we're even going to bail out of September. We're going to just move uh, 2020 all the way into 2021. Because we're going to forget about the, the crisis of 2020. Yes. We're, we're, we're and just- so at this point, the fifth... FC3 is going to be in 2021. And but the, the the upside is is it's going to be in in our favorite weekend of April that we've always we always like to try to plan mm-hmm. for, right? So it's going to be in um, the last weekend of April, April 24th and 25th uh, of 2021. We're going to have the same venue, uh, Total yep. Sports Experience in Gates on, on Elm Grove, uh, which is bus accessible even on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, we have confirmed that our, our guest, Jason Fount, the Red Power Ranger, is going to stay with us. So he's this poor guy. He's been reaching out to us since we started doing mini cons. And I really feel like we've been stringing him along <laughs> to a particular degree. No, really. We have a convention. Honest. Honest. When, when Catherine Sutherland was here in our third show, mm-hmm. when, when she was here, loved she. Her. Oh, my God. Loved her. She, when we went to Niagara Falls, we were mm-hmm. at dinner at Longhorn. Before we came back to Rochester and we were talking and she's like, oh, I really think you should get uh, my good friend, Jason Font, blah, 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 blah. Before we even hit the hotel in Rochester, when I dropped her off and I had Sybil, Uh she had already emailed him or sent him a text message. And before he, she even got out of my car that night, I had an email from him. Yes. So, so this was what, 2018? Yeah, it was 16, 17, 18. Yeah, 18 was the third show. It was May of 2018 that I got my first email from him. And then um, 2019, he couldn't come because he uh, was already going to be um, in Buffalo. Like mm-hmm. uh, either the weekend or before or after ours. And we're like, he goes, I just can't do it because it's too close. And we're like, we totally agree. So yeah. We had him on for 2020 and we've been talking back and forth and we had him on for a podcast and he got his flights changed and things like that. And then 
Um, I had asked him in June, how is he good? I'm like, right now we're still good to go for September. He's like, keep me posted. He was supposed to be in Tampa for the Tampa Bay convention. Mm -hmm. I think last week, which they ended up canceling um, and postponing. And then I had to email him Monday, no, Tuesday night last week um, because we were at TSC on Monday. Then we had um, uh, Nerd World News. Yeah. And then Tuesday we found out and I'm like, we can't say anything until we can figure out what kind of guests, what our guests look like. So right now we can confirm that Jason Font is still available for April 24th and 25th. So right. we still have the Red Power Ranger and he's- It like, has been a guy. saga to get this poor guy I, into our show. It has. And we're like, oh, the, the, the year should not be named anymore. It'll be the year that we kind of forget. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but we're looking forward to that. And I have emails out to the other agents. So we're look, we're waiting to hear about the availability of our other guests that we had scheduled. Mike McFarland, for uh, was it Tiffany Vollmer? <laughs> Stephanie Vollmer and Mike McFarland. I am, don't know their Our availability camel. yet. Stop it, Chris. You know that. <laughs> I'm putting you know, it out to the universe. I am so putting it out to the universe like because one of these Dana days I could make that happen. You know, like you just Dan a heart attack every time you say that. <laughs> he, he loses a couple more minutes of his life every time you try to put that out there because everyone's like, hey! and then you're like, no. We're just <laughs> trying. We're trying. It's my way of putting it out to the universe. They're, they're, I'm always told that if you put something out to the universe, the universe will help you make it happen, right? So I want the universe to help me make it happen because that would be phenomenal. It, it would be phenomenal. At so, this point, but, we don't know what's in the schedule. Maybe he can arrange it. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> And maybe we can win the lottery too. Um, well, you know, there's details. Yeah. So, but we're still looking at trying to do some um, events in the fall. So mm -hmm. we'll keep track of our um, Facebook page. Don't forget, um, we are on July 29th um, in the early evening reviewing, doing our book club of Ready Player One. So to make sure that you email either myself or Anne that you want to participate in that. And right. then I can um, have the Zoom links of, um, sent out to you. They'll probably be sent out like the day before um, with like the last minutes type stuff. So if you have um, want to participate and you haven't gotten the link yet, it's because I haven't set it up yet. Um, Anne has yeah. had some brilliant ideas for things to do without a convention. Oh my God. She has. She's like, so we're looking at all these different ideas in order to see our FC three bulls. Yep. Right? That That's the called? name I gave them. FC three bulls. Um, so just keep track of our Facebook page. Um, we're, we're, we're thinking out of the box right now. We're thinking of a lot of things to, um, Oh, darling. Out with you guys. Oh, my yeah. sweet girl. There is no such thing as a box anymore. We live in a weird world. <laughs> it's all it's all bets are off. The game it's is it's a fun. <laughs> it's a crazy, crazy world out there it's right truly now. Truly bigger on the inside. So yep. Um, yep. We have all these ideas that are starting to flow, and it's just a matter of logistics and how can we um get these um ideas going and rolling and um for the health and safety of everybody. Right. So that's what we're thinking about. I mean, we, you and Anna have been talking about the, the online book club, you know, to be done through what Zoom, Discord, Zoom. stuff like that. Yep. So the yeah. first one is Ready Player One, and the second one is by um, an author. Um, it's like the Girls Geek Guide to Gaming? Depravity. Something. I don't know. Cam Mags is, and Anne had put it out there, and I have to get the book. So. Yeah, in August, uh, Sam is going to be on our podcast uh, and arranged it so we can have an interview with her uh, about her, her published works and and, uh, and possibly being a guest at FC3. So that's going to be fun. We'll get a chance to talk to Sam in August. That'll be the end of August, so it'll probably drop about the 26th, 27th, whatever that. Yeah, towards the end of August, early September, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Something like that. So. But other than that, I don't think we have any events. We're we're still trying to plan, plan, plan for everything and anything. Good deal. Good deal. And no comic chicks this week. It'll be next week. Okay. And I'm already working on compiling some stuff for Nerd World News uh, for Monday night. 
That's already happened. Has it? Nerd World News has already happened. It's Wednesday now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because I'm thinking of Sunday. I'm. You know, he's talking about next Monday. Yeah, yeah, that too. I actually, you guys, you guys did give me an idea for an article. Um, and I don't want to just go ahead and ha hash out something else. I want to start doing some research and write the article myself. Maybe I'll call up Deanna and see if she can give me a hand with uh, how I want to word everything. Um, but uh, I actually have something I want to write for Nerd World News. Woo woo! I'm telling you. Okay, Billy, I know you had a question of the week. Yes, I, I might do. Not, I might not have an answer, but go ahead. Oh, you yeah, <laughs> have an answer. Okay, I'm just to give proper credit, I'm... Uh, Borrowing this from a gentleman by the name of Tom Prietti, who is a Facebook uh, friend of mine. And mm -hmm. according to his bio, here's resident scholar in media at St. John Fisher, president of international media at Cayuga Community College, and a professor at Monroe Community College. So that's where I got the, the question. And it is, in your mind, is there one movie that's perfect? And and I threw Tanya under the bus early because I said you can't oh, say Princess you. Bride because that's the automatic response. Everybody would say Princess Bride, and that's rightfully so. It is a perfect movie. We've done podcasts about it. We've done movie nights out about it. So we'll just throw out um, uh, Princess Bride is the perfect movie, right? But now we have to think of a second one, something other than the Princess Bride. <sighs> and I, I have one. I don't know, Billy. Did you? Did you? I, think I've, of I've one? got two. I've got two. I, okay, like go I said, ahead with yours. I, I've uh, had the luxury of actually answering this question online a couple days ago. That's nice. when it existed. So I'm going to go first, and it, um, me answering it made me rewatch it again Friday. Back to the Future. Not two or three, but the original Back the to the Future. The original Back to the Future. It's <laughs> what funny. Makes it a perfect it's, movie. I think it's funny. Uh, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. It's got drama to it. The performances, I think, are perfect. I think that I, I don't think the script has any holes in it. And I think the casting is perfect all the way around. So that I don't think there's a flaw in Back to the Future. Uh, and like, okay. And it hits all the sort of the, the major at different times. You're excited. Will they accomplish their mission? Uh, it's, it's obviously funny. There's a sweetness to it. Um, so I'm going with back to the future. And the other one that seems to fit all of my criteria is Raiders of the Lost Ark. The first one. Dun, 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 dun. That's great. Of course, Amy Farrah Fowler, the noted neurologist uh, and wife of Sheldon Cooper came up with a great observation about it. Um, that movie didn't need Indiana Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark could have gone all the way to the end without him in it, and it would have ended the same way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Nazis would have opened the... the Because uh... Belloc always wanted to open the thing. He would have always arranged. So as soon as he got his hands on it, he arranged to open it up. So even if it took him a couple more months to find it, you know, or years to find it, Belloc was going to be bent on creating that ceremony where he opened up the Ark. So no matter what happened... If anything, Indiana Jones made it happen faster, but he could have been completely eliminated from the, the story and they still would have found the damn thing. <laughs> it would have been way more boring. Yep. <laughs> it's like more cowbell, more yeah. bullwhip. So, the, but those are good. I, I loved those movies. Uh, you know, Indiana Jones was that great rollicking serial adventure that George Lucas loves mm -hmm. so much. And and so, yeah, I, I agree with you on and that. And I one. think in both of those, there isn't a point where oh, I can skip this part. Or, right. You know, I, you know, you you want to watch the whole thing. At least I do. So those and and are my in order to oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say. So th that's those are my choices. They, the script, the performances, the. I think everything is exactly right about it and you don't want to miss any of it. And you don't want to miss a thing. Mm -hmm, exactly. Which <laughs> of course would lead you to uh, the asteroid movie. Um, there you go. <laughs> oh, Which is thing. not a perfect movie. I'm just no, going to throw that not. out there. Um, to give Tanya more time, Tanya, Tanya has anything inspired you? What's, yeah. You're actually, ready? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Fire away. Um, Let me hear what you got. Um, you know, I go back and it, it made it uh, made me laugh. It, it was like anticipation, things like that. I have to go with The Incredibles. Great, great uh, choice. Good choice. Great choice. 
the incredible i'm like i'm looking it's like perfect movies perfect movies and then seeing all these lists and i'm like I haven't seen it haven't seen it haven't seen it haven't seen it oh saw that one um with one of the great breakout secondary characters ever with the the, the designer edmund edmund mode oh yeah uh, nobody and, saw how popular she was going to be coming exactly it's like um when he's lifting the car and the kids are like oh mm -hmm. and, and, and just well what, what'd you put my super suit type it's just like samuel jackson and mm -hmm. just the cast is, is makes you wanting for more and then it's like but like the incredibles 2 didn't necessarily do it as well mm -hmm. as the first one by the way, speaking of that real quick, I want to throw this in because like I mentioned earlier, I've been I've been messing around and just watching TikTok videos. I watched two back to back that made me laugh my ass off. The first of which were these two guys in a marching band. They were in the bleachers for the, the, the school football game. Right. And one was shouting down Frozone's lines and the other one was shouting up the wife's lines in between the, you know, during a downtime, I thought that was fantastic. And I didn't think anything could be better than that until I flipped two or three more videos. And suddenly I'm at a high school football game stands across the field from each other. And there was a group of kids shouting out Frozone's lines across the field. And then the other gr group of kids across the field were shouting the wife's lines back. <laughs> I'm thinking that was mm -hmm. Amazing! That was so fun to watch. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so, and then, like, my, I definitely have to stay with Disney and Pixar and go mm -hmm. um, Toy Story. Toy Story was Toy a great. Story movie. Said, yeah, the first one. So yeah, absolutely, very good idea. So it, it makes you laugh. It makes you cry. Um, you didn't necessarily kiss five dollars goodbye. <laughs> Actually, yeah. can I go back to mine real quick because I just sure. thought of. Another thing that makes them perfect, they'll never feel dated because they're already period pieces. You won't watch yeah. them 50 years from now and go, oh, that's no, that phone takes it. No, because it already takes place in the 50 exactly. back to the future. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for the most part, and Raiders of the Lost Ark takes place in the 30s. So you're 30s. not yeah. beholden to the technology of when they were made. Very good. So good that was points. another thought I had. So. Sorry, so. Chris. No, that's fine. I, I love the discussion. Discussion good. Mm -hmm. um, my contribution is The Fifth Element. Huh. For me, it's a perfect movie because it's just so full throttle, right? It, it does, it's not ashamed to be obnoxious. It's not ashamed to, to go to different locations and, and you know, be and, and Luke Besson, man, I'm telling you, he, he loves that cutting edge. He just goes out there and he, I think he's the closest to genuine science fiction as opposed to sci-fi opera, space opera, like star Wars or star Trek, which is drama in space. Right. And that, that sociological adventure in space, things like that. Um, you know, Jupiter ascending tried to be a Luke Besson film. And it wasn't because Luke Besson wasn't involved in it, I don't believe. So there's where they probably fell, fell short. But Valerian, The City of a Thousand Planets, Fifth Element, I love both of those movies. Yes, Valerian has some flaws in terms of the acting, but in terms of the visuals, the presentation, the story, the ideas, I thought were fantastic. And I know they came from a French mm -hmm. uh, comic from the, the 20s and 30s. So there's an inspiration there. Uh, but Fifth Element... It's one of those movies that no matter where it is, when I find it, if like I'm surfing, channel surfing, and suddenly I come across the fifth element, I'm going to stop and watch the rest of it and laugh at the funny stuff every single time. It's just a given. So, yeah, that's yeah. one of the ones that I'll stop and watch. But also, Armageddon is another one that doesn't matter where it is, I will stop mm -hmm. and watch it. Well, we, we, we should probably do end up doing a podcast about, um, you know, basically popcorn movies, right? The the stupid movies that are just, you, you shut your brain down at the door and just watch the movie um, because it's not going to make you think, it's not going to make you react. It's just going to, you're going to enjoy yourself and you're going to move along in your day. Um, I guess we have I, our next week's podcast. What's that? I guess we have next week's podcast. There you go. That sounds like a plan. And we got to make sure movie. Dan's available. Because I miss him. He's I know, lawyer. I do miss him. I miss a Dan. Dan, I miss you. Um, and Dan, Dan, if you're listening, it's about time. It's almost there. Just about, just about. Dan, punch it. Because this has been FC3's Monkey Business, a product of 
the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you April 24th and 25th of 2021 at the Total Sports Experience in Gates. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, follow us wherever we go, and we will lead you to where the entertainment is. You guys have a great week, have a safe week, and we will talk to you again next week. Dun dun. Dun dun. <laughs> <laughs>